In this video, I'll describe the idea of local linearity, which tells you when you can approximate instantaneous rates of change with average rates of change. To get started, here's a scenario to help us think about the underlying concepts. A rabbit breeder currently has 10 female rabbits. She controls their breeding so that they all mate with males at the same time, have a litter approximately one month later, and then wait an additional two months before mating again. P of t is the number of rabbits at time t in months. The size of the population P of t can be modeled by the formula R of t equals 10 times 2 to the t, where t is measured in months. We want to know how quickly the rabbit population is growing at t equals 1 month and t equals 2 months. Let's take a minute to think about this situation. In this scenario, P of t describes the actual number of rabbits at any given moment in time. So, if we translate the scenario into terms of p of t, this is saying that at the beginning, at zero months, there are 10 rabbits. Then, one month later, we don't know exactly how many rabbits there are, but this is when the babies are born. A month after that, we still don't know the number of rabbits, but this is when the rabbits are allowed to rest. Then, at three months, two months after giving birth, we still don't know the total number of rabbits, but this is when the rabbits mate again. Now, after the initial 10 rabbits, we don't know exactly how many rabbits there are, but the R of t formula gives us a prediction. It's a model, so it's not going to be completely accurate, but if we use this formula, it would predict that there are 10 rabbits at the start, approximately 20 rabbits after one month, 40 rabbits after two months, and 80 rabbits after three months. We know that at the beginning of month four, more babies would be born, so this model is probably telling us that there were a total of 80 rabbits at the end of month 3. Since the babies were all born at t equals 1, this would mean that there are also 80 rabbits at t equals 1 and t equals 2. And so what are we trying to figure out? When we're asking how quickly the rabbit population is growing at t equals 1 and t equals 2, we're asking, what is the instantaneous rate of change of p of t at t equals 1 and t equals 2? Let's first investigate the instantaneous rate of change at t equals 2 months. The strategy for doing this is to approximate the instantaneous rate of change using average rates of change over small time intervals. So let's start by zooming in to the interval starting at t equals 1.9 months. Since the babies were all born at t equals 1, there were 80 rabbits at t equals 1.9 months. So, to compute the average rate of change from t equals 1.9 to t equals 2 months, we would compute the change in the number of rabbits divided by the amount of change in time. For this interval, the change in rabbits is 80 minus 80, and the change in time is 2 minus 1.9, which results in a rate of change of 0 rabbits per month. And we could zoom in even further to the interval starting at t equals 1.99 months. Since the babies were all born at t equals 1, there were 80 rabbits at t equals 1.99 months. So, to compute the average rate of change from t equals 1.99 to t equals 2 months, we would compute the change in the number of rabbits divided by the amount of change in time. For this interval, the change in rabbits is 80 minus 80, and the change in time is 2 minus 1.99, which results in a rate of change of 0 rabbits per month. Now, we have two approximations of the instantaneous rate of change, and they're both the same, a rate of zero rabbits per month. This suggests that the instantaneous rate of change at t equals two months is also equal to zero rabbits per month. And this would make sense. Since the rabbits only have babies at t equals one month, the size of the population isn't changing at t equals two months. Now, what about at t equals one month? Let's zoom into the interval starting at t equals 0.9 months. At this moment in time, the babies haven't yet been born, so there are just 10 rabbits. To approximate the instantaneous rate of change at t equals 1 month, we'll compute the average rate of change from t equals 0.9 to t equals 1 month. As before, this is delta p divided by delta t, which is 80 rabbits minus 10 rabbits divided by 1 month minus 0.9 months which gives us a rate of 700 rabbits per month. 
we can get a more accurate approximation by zooming in further to the interval starting at t equals 0.99 months. At this moment in time, there are still just 10 rabbits. To approximate the instantaneous rate of change at t equals 1 month, we'll compute the average rate of change from t equals 0.99 to t equals 1 month. As before, this is delta p divided by delta t, which is 80 rabbits minus 10 rabbits divided by 1 month minus 0.99 months, which gives us a rate of 7,000 rabbits per month. Unlike when we were looking at t equals 2 months, these two average rates of change have drastically different values, and they don't appear to be getting closer to a particular number. This suggests that we can't approximate the instantaneous rate of change when t equals 1 month. Why is this happening? At t equals 2 months, when we computed average rates of change over successively smaller intervals of time, the values of delta p were always proportional to delta t. In this case, they were 0 times as large as delta t. Thus, there were sufficiently small values of delta t where the average rate of change was indistinguishable from a constant rate of change. In contrast, at t equals 1 month, the smaller we made delta t, the larger the average rates of change became, and there were no values of delta t for which delta p was proportional to delta t. Thus, the average rates of change were never close to a constant rate of change. We can get a better idea of what is happening if we look at a graphical representation. We know that from t equals 0 to t equals just less than a month, there are 10 rabbits. Then, right at t equals 1 month, the babies are born, and all of a sudden, there are 80 rabbits. Now, let's think about what's happening at t equals 2 months. We can zoom in to look at what happens with small changes in time. At t equals 2 months, a small change in time corresponds to a proportional change in the number of bunnies. Here, the amount of change in the number of bunnies is zero times as large as the amount of change in time. And graphically, this means that if we zoom in enough, at t equals 2 months, the graph of p of t is indistinguishable from a line. Another way to say this is that p is locally linear at t equals 2 months. Let's zoom back out and take a look at what's happening at t equals 1 month. Now, if we tried to look at a small change in t, if p had a constant rate of change with respect to t over this interval, then that constant rate would be represented by the slope of this line. And if we used a smaller amount of change in time, if p had a constant rate of change over the interval, then that constant rate would be represented by the slope of this line. And we can see that no matter how small we make delta t, the graph of p of t, which is shown in blue, is not similar to either the green line or the yellow line. This jump in the values of p at t equals 1 month means that p is not locally linear at t equals 1 month. And this explains why we were able to approximate the instantaneous rate of change using average rates of change at t equals 2 months, but not at t equals 1 month. Because p is locally linear at t equals 2 months, but not at t equals 1 month. To summarize what we've seen, we have been thinking about the question, when can you approximate the instantaneous rate of change using average rates of change over small time intervals? You can do this when the function is locally linear at the particular value of t. Here, I'll call that value t0. In the examples, we used values of 2 and 1 for t0. And what does it mean to be locally linear at t0? When there is a sufficiently small delta t for which the average rate of change is indistinguishable from a constant rate of change at t0, and for which the graph of p of t is indistinguishable from a line at t0. When might a function fail to be locally linear? We saw one example of a function that was not locally linear at a particular point when there was a jump in the function. This could also happen when a function has a cusp or if the function has a vertical tangent. And this is what it means for a function to be locally linear at a point.